right, there we go. We're here. Hopefully we're here. Good. Um, hello everybody, how are you all doing? Um, I did in my back uh, maybe like six, seven days ago. Just, just a kind of small niggling but very stiff shoulder. Um, kind of makes your playing suffer, makes your mood suffer. But I've cobbled together um, a lesson on memory and how to memorise, so I hope um, it'll be of use to you. Um, okay, so the, the basic premise of this session um, is to come up with a few ways to stop the very, very common kind of problems we have with memorising pieces. Um, like picture the last time you performed a piece of music and you had a memory slip and how suddenly the kind of world open up, uh, opens up beneath you and you get swallowed in this, this the, the, the pits of hell and you have no idea where you are. Um, uh, this is a common uh, occurrence <laughs> with musicians. Um, and my, my kind of idea is that basically we rely on muscle memory too much in playing an instrument in playing the guitar. Um, what is muscle memory? Well, it, um, it's a kind of weird term. It's this idea that your, you know, your 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 muscles have their own memory uh, apart from the brain, and obviously that's a load of rubbish. Um, but it's it's the kind of it, I, I I think of um, muscle memory as like it's the part of of our memory that is so well rehearsed that we can't even we don't even think about it right it, it it becomes part of just a string of notes that we play um and what we tend to find with the piece is that we play it so much that we we really bolster this muscle memory that um like to the point where we can play the piece or phrases without maybe knowing what they are without stopping and knowing what the the names of the notes we're playing are um, and muscle memory is so, um, it's, it, it's really, really fragile, right? It's, it's fantastic for, for, for a few things. And we, we need muscle memory to be able to play well, but it's the most fragile of the memorization methods and techniques. Um, just let me know that the sounds okay. I had microphone issues again this week. Um, and let me know how you're doing. How you doing out there? You okay? You okay? I could be better. I must admit today, I could be better. Um, yeah, some days, some days are just a bit rubbish, aren't they? And some days are, are okay. <laughs> some days might even be classed as good in my books every now and then. Um, I've hastily put together a, a, a PDF, four pages of PDF. It's in the Dropbox folder, which is in the chat. Um, don't forget, also, whilst I'm talking about links, sign up to my mailing list if you enjoy what I do. And I will be very soon putting up details of uh, exclusive Zoom masterclasses, free masterclasses in December and beyond. Um, hello, Rachel. Hello, Potterhead. Regulars. Um, thanks, for, thanks for showing up. I will do my best, considering... I'm in, I'm in a bit of pain right there on my shoulder. So, um, yeah, I think I, I'm just going to go back to like a few ideas, a few things, things that happen when, when memory isn't so good in a piece. Um, so like right here, if you make a mistake, do you start again from the beginning of the piece or section? This is a common symptom of relying too heavily on muscle memory. Uh, can you play from memory in practice, but you crumble when performing? This is this is down not j just to uh, memorization, but also your experience as a performer and um, your ability to control kind of performance anxiety. But a large part of it is um, is uh, is relying too much on muscle memory. And can you play your piece from memory at half speed? Or, or, or do a kind of disrupting process to the piece. Like, some people really struggle. Once they've got their piece to a certain 
tempo. They will struggle to play it faster or slower. They'll also struggle to, to change it in any kind of big way, to make big dynamic changes, um, big musical changes. And again, this is a sign of like, uh, of, of the piece being very, very well memorized in terms of pure action, but, not, but, but, but maybe a lack of memorization in terms of uh, intellectually going through the piece, slowly um, examining key chords, all the kind of theoretical sides of music, but also then the emotional sides of music and having it all clearly laid out in our minds. Hey Simon, good to see you again. Thanks for showing up. Um, now, so here's, this wasn't part of the PDF, but I'll just show it to you anyway. Um, relying too heavily on muscle memory. So like your hands learn a phrase or piece as a single chunk. Uh, this, is, uh, this is really important. This is the way we, we, we learn. Um, and we can only execute it from start to finish in roughly the same way, the same speed. This is what I talked about earlier. You alter anything or zone out for a second and the memory falls like a house of cards. Um, I, 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 think, I think probably everyone here can, can relate to that, that suddenly we're performing or we zone out and think about what's for dinner and then we can't get back into it because our, uh, that, that really kind of... Um, Deep but 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 brittle way of memorizing the muscle memory is is disrupted, and we have no way of getting back into the piece um, without other techniques. Uh, so um, basically, here is uh, what we're going to do. We're going to take blah, blah 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 lovely little source study from um, Opus Thirty One. It's number one from Opus Thirty One. Um, I shall play it to you briefly now. Um... tried to pick a study that wasn't too difficult. Uh, I get the feeling that maybe some of the things I've done in the past, like the Carcassi study, whilst they're amazing, they do like rule out a lot, a lot of people because they're at quite a tough level. Um, thanks, Potthead. Um, thanks for saying that sounded beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so hopefully, I mean, this is a piece that you can play even at kind of grade two level, I would say. It doesn't need to be fast. Um, very, very nice. Typical saw piece in C major. Very nice functional harmony, but um, it's got everything we need in there. Um, you can download that PDF in the, uh, in the link, the Dropbox link, which is in the, uh, the description and the comments there. Um, hey, Roger, uh, this will be an interesting topic. I used to easily commit pieces to memory without thinking about it. But ever since my children arrived, my memory has proved far less reliable. <laughs> Yes, yes, I find it much harder to remember things too. Yes, um, <laughs> why is that? Why do kids destroy our ability to memorize things? Um, probably, <laughs> well, the lack of sleep, you're probably over the lack of sleep phase, as, as I am really, but um, yeah, I guess you're juggling a million things every day, so it's hard to memorize things. Um, okay. Let's, let's examine how I think you can practice to bolster the other sides of memorization, not just muscle memory, but everything else. Um, so we take a first phrase of the piece, and the important thing here is that you choose the, the length of this. Okay, you choose, uh, let's, well, I'm just trying to find a better, there we go, that's better, you can see me, you can see the PDF better too. Um, so 
this is something that we can all play hopefully in the uh, in the in the stream right now that much okay not even changing to the G chord yet but you might want to choose literally just the first three notes so what uh, and the, the the more we do this the better we get at determining um, what a number of notes we need to play in order for it to be beneficial to us. Um, I like part of the, th this initial process is <laughs> what I used to call the triangle, the triangle of looking, the triangle of eyes, um, or this, or, or the, now it's like the kind of square, the square of looking. I need to come up with a better term for that. Um, so I think the, the, the primary idea with this is that we need to be, from day one, playing a bit of the music without looking at the page. Um, I always tell this anecdote to all of my students of, you know, the times when I've been playing in, in, in tours and doing shows that kind of have 40, 50 or more performances in a row. Um, you know, typically as a musician, you sit in the pit and you read your music. You've 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 done a bit of prep on it if it's difficult, but um, you tend to be kind of a lot a lot of time sight reading. And after kind of forty or fifty performances of reading something that might not be that difficult, um, if I were to then try and play it from memory, I couldn't. Even after forty or fifty very good playings of it through, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to play a lot of it from memory. And this just goes to show that. Even if we play a piece a million times whilst looking at the page, that doesn't necessarily mean we've memorised it and it doesn't help with the memorization of it. Um, and I, I think this, is, this has to do with the way that the, the, the brain prioritises memorization, Because if, you're, if, if, if your brain knows that you've got the score there to read, it's not going to spend the time recalling the data, the, everything from the brain. So, so it's not trying to search itself for, for the for what it's learnt so far. You just end up reading and reading and reading, and that's it. So, from day one, first thing you do is look at the music and you play it. Whatever the length of phrase is, you have to pick the length, as I said. Okay. Now, you might be comfortable with playing a lot more than that. Fine. Um, doesn't matter. So. Once we've got it sounding really, really good and slow, again, we play slow so you don't make mistakes um, f from early on. You can, as I said, number one, repeat phrases, sorry, look at music until comfortable and free of mistakes. Now, you can also name the notes and the chords. That helps. We'll go on to that a, a, bit, a bit later. After that, you can try the phrase only looking at the fretting hand. Um, In this way, we can also examine any potential problems in the left hand, in the fretting hand, um, potential problems with strings being blocked off, uh, with the fingers not being right at the um, the end of their frets. Um, at least now, when we're focused purely on the fretting hand, we're able to pick up these sort of errors. Okay, so we've been doing that for a while. Blah blah blah. Um, the important part now is that from now on you can't look at the music and play at the same time for this phrase. So set yourself the task of not playing for the music at all now. You can still look back at it if you need to, but don't look and play at the same time. Um, what we're doing now is causing e even... So we can store these notes in our short-term memory, yeah? And the way for them to slowly delve their way into long-term memory is by repeatedly recalling them from the short-term memory. If we look at the music, we don't have to recall them from deep, you know, from that place in their brain where they've just started to kind of seed themselves. So even if we look and then look away a second later, we are starting to recall them from short-term memory. 
rather than reading them and them the, the not being kind of prompted by our, uh, by our memory. Um, so you play blah, 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 blah. Think about the phrasing too at this point. Um, think about tone. For, uh, plucking hand we're going to look at in a second. Once you feel comfortable, you move to the next step of the triangle or the square uh, to plucking hand. Okay, and you can do this either way. You can start with your plucking hand or fretting hand. Doesn't really matter. Um, so you can uh, then look at plucking hand. Again, if you if you don't feel comfortable, you might want to look it back at the music. You might want to look back at the music anyway, just to make sure nothing's no mistakes have crept in. Um, but don't play and look at the same time, like I said. For, for plucking hand, write everything in, write every finger in. Um, I don't think guitarists, I don't think we should be trusted, none of us, with like just letting the fingers do what they want. Okay, there's a few people out there, I'm sure. <laughs> um, most professionals, but, but I say most, I'm sure there are some that don't. Um, so write every single plucking hand fingering in. You may need to um, to look ahead to make sure that things you do here don't affect um, what happens ahead negatively. So, you know, if you're just looking at those two bars, you may find yourself um, getting the perfect fingering that then doesn't work later on. So be, be aware of that. You can always use a rubber and, and, and refine your fingerings. We have to. Um, we can't always get the perfect fingering the first time round. So now I'm looking at my plucking hand, something that we, we very rarely do. Um, again, we're not looking at the music. At this point, you can play it really, really slowly. Making sure that the fingering works, blah, blah, blah. Um, we can experiment at this point too. starting dynamic to um, there isn't one in this source study I don't think no so we've got to we've got to think of it ourselves um, okay and now that we've done that now that um, we've we've kind of gone through a very easy very small phrase fretting hand and plucking hand you can now look at nothing close your eyes and play the phrase again completely um, without any visual aid, okay? As we're doing this, we need to kind of, the, the, all the brain power that was being expended by looking, we can kind of divert to feeling, feeling the hands. Um, make sure that the plucking hand fingers are exactly as you wrote down. You may need to look back at the score to remind yourself and look away, um, etc. It's worth pointing it, pointing out that at, at this stage too, we can be thinking about, you know, stopping notes, taking, say, the fretting hand off. If you want to do that, um, this all feeds into the memorization process. Okay, there is the simple process. Um, you look at the music, you look at the fretting hand, you look at the plucking hand, then you can look at nothing. Close your eyes, stare into the distance, whatever. Um, and at, at this point, we can choose to go on to the next phrase. Um, I think what I would suggest is that we take the next phrase entirely separately. That also allows this one to kind of rest a bit and try and worm its way into our mind. So we take the next uh, two bars, same thing, I like, um, uh, so look at the music. At this point, you can even play without looking at the music. 
Um, I feel like maybe the first time you tackle a new phrase, you can look at the music. And slowly analyse what your hands might do. I mean, the fingerings are written out here, which is handy for us. Uh, but then, as I said, once you start looking at your left hand, we we ban ourselves from looking and playing at the same time, looking at the music and playing at the same time, okay? Um, so... Use this time to play slow. Um, purely focusing on a really lovely left hand, uh, uh, fretting hand movement. Tons of um, fingering choices we made for this phrase. Uh, let's try, say we were doing A, M, I, which is very self explanatory, that, that fingering there. Well, moving on from there, we could do A, A, three A's in a row. Well, that's fine, doesn't matter because. It's slow enough, this music, that we can do that and it not be a problem. Uh, we could go... Uh, I, M, I. Following on from the, the big plucking hand live stream the other day, why not M, I, M? Why would that be bad? Anybody? Anybody in chat? Let me know. Um, Potterhead, Roger, Rachel, Simon. <laughs> um, I'll let you let that percolate. Okay, at this point, Plan, planning the plucking hand fingering, whatever it is, and play, play slow enough that you can reliably do that again and again and again. a point in the practice when we can really try our, our, our hardest to to make the most of recalling from short-term memory so we played that first phrase I'm not opening my eyes now because I want to try and memorize, remember it we played the first phrase a lot but by now it's it's often worked its way out of short-term memory <laughs> plucking hand fingering wasn't right on the second phrase um, but that's that's your goal um, so kind of did the same wrong well, kind of not you know it's not a bad fingering just not the best um, the reason why yeah um, it isn't bad MIM like the, the only reason why I would say that's not the optimal finger against because you've got a string crossing, you know, a negative string crossing there. Um, like, again, the, the, at this speed, as someone at grade two level can do that fine. It, it's just one, you know, this thing, I, I, I talk about how we, we should try and, um, and get away from this. Yeah, like, um, we, we should try and be, Get, get used to always changing in a positive way so that when we come across really, really fast stuff, um, we can, you know, we, we can do it really well. Uh, Pothead, you say, I prefer 413 for left hand, for fretting hand. 
what happens with that though if we if we're doing three there jumping it there I don't like that okay uh, moving the third finger there you could you could always go three and two Maybe that's what you were thinking about. You don't have to slide the second finger down to there. Okay, so anyway, all that aside. Um, that's not right. We've now got the chance to play the whole phrase through and do the same process. You can play looking at the music if you want. Fretting hand, plucking hand. Okay, uh, then we can expand out. We can either keep expanding and adding to this, or we can move on to the next section. Um, pod ahead. Um, I'm trying to think that I find it easier to look at the piece because you can all write in it. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. But but this this is the thing we 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 should try, and sure it's easier to play and look at the piece at the same time. But we but we're challenging our memory here, and this is a really really good way to learn. And this the muscle memory thing, right? When when we when we're looking at the music and we're not necessarily looking at the hands and what they're doing and programming it in, then the muscle memory is starts to get formed on whatever fingering we we've randomly done at the start of learning a piece and so then this is why later on we battle with trying to correct a fingering that we don't like so much because in that very rigid memory the muscle memory we've got the wrong fingering that we have to to constantly have to think about with, with the conscious part of our brain to to correct if we can try and get the right fingering for both hands at the start, then that works its way into our muscle memory, and then it's really, really solid. Um, so uh, the, challenge yourself with this. Challenge yourself with looking at the music as not doesn't have to be as little as possible. But as I said, we are if we try and recall um, the the music um, rather than look. So if we're playing it whilst recalling it from a memory, this really, really helps the process. And this isn't just, this can be the process from, um, from right at the start, okay, from day one, but it can also be the process of correcting a, a, a piece that we haven't memorised very well. Um, there's, there's the kind of, the basic principle. I think the, this, that process is almost enough. To, 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 to yield a benefit in most people who, who perform uh, and, and practice and have issues with memorising pieces. Of course, at some point, what's going to happen is you play the piece through and there'll be memory slip. And I think the thing here with a, with a memory slip that happens later on, don't try, like, don't write it off and then start again or, or, or start from... Uh, the, the start of a big section until we hit the problem area again stop immediately and fix that memorization issue so say for instance um, I mess up here um, I don't want to go from the start of the, the that pink phrase it's essentially just dodging the issue. It's just being like, okay, I, don't worry. I'll play it again and then it will we'll be okay. It will be okay. Um, we, we've got to stop doing that kind of thing. We all, we, we, we all do that. I'll just go from the start again and then it'll be okay. Oh, uh, yeah, that's fine. And rarely is that the case. Um, so at this point, say we've got our fingerings written in there. Um, bum, bum, bum. 
and then whatever can be M again. Um, I think I prefer I. And then. Um, so, you know, um, at this point, you can choose the whole phrase. We can try and play it looking. Here we got a situation, just a technical thing of the, the third finger jumping across the string. That's fine. Um, I, I, looking at that, I think in order to stop that from happening, we'd have a probably a fingering that is more cumbersome in the end. Um, Now the the reason this triangle of, of looking the square of like looking at different points too it is partly because a lot of the time our memory is hinged upon what we're looking at and so we we we, we end up being tied like um, like this is our kind of demon um, the music is our our, our our demon if you're familiar with the Philip Pullman novels you know what I mean like it we have to have it by our side to kind of trigger our memory. All these, like just even looking at the, the typeface and the way the notes are written, can trigger our memory. All this stuff is is mushed together in the brain, and so not relying too much on one focal point, one place to look at, is really really important. If we break the habit of using the visual aid as a crutch, then we're more likely to use other methods of memorizing. Um, Potterhead says, in that triangle of infinity, how does one know what their brain registers the first time you see a piece? Um, in that triangle of infinity, oh my goodness, how does one know what their brain registers the first time you see a piece? Um, it's simultaneous, right? Yeah, I guess, uh, like, I, I, yeah, I'm having trouble kind of <laughs> contemplating again. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not at full capacity here. Uh, my apologies. Um, so, like, I, okay, okay. Well, the, part of the point of doing this was that we, as I said, we break, we break the visual crutch. So... Once we're not looking at the music, we're looking at a fretting hand or plucking hand. Firstly, we're recalling the notes from memory. Fantastic. But we're also using a different thing to look at to stimulate more, um, more <laughs> memorization. Like people will often uh, like play a piece you, really, you know really well and then suddenly look at your plucking hand. And what you'll often find is that you forget how to play it just because you're looking at something new and maybe also because the plucking hand is a thing that we haven't been aware of and so it's actually um, sometimes it's a void of memory we don't know what's going on it's purely the muscle of memory getting us through that when we actually come look at it and try and dissect what's happening we get lost um, and it's the same you know the same thing when, when you're when you're playing a piece of music uh, live and you're looking at the score if you suddenly look away and you see a vastly different scene to what you're used to in the practice room like people staring at you in the face that visual um, difference can also can sometimes block our memory um, I hope that makes sense so like the, 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 this isn't this isn't just about getting the hands sorted it is about breaking from day one our, our affinity to the page I think that's really really important um, and uh, as I said this is often enough trying this method out is often enough but we need to bolster muscle memory with other things too um, Simon Hub just before I move on Simon Harwood says once you think you have a phrase in your head would you consider playing it through quite fast a few times to test it out absolutely yeah yeah and and trying it fast trying it super fast trying it slow all of these things disrupt the the kind of fragility of a, um, a very shallow muscle memory which is 
you know, basically the, the, the body learning how to do things in one very specific way without the malleability, malleability of changing it. Um, again, this is this part of this process is why uh, I encourage trying to think about dynamics and musical expression from the very first playthrough, because all of that information, the intellectual and the emotional information that we can pin on to notes, helps us memorize them. And if that can become part of our muscle memory, the way the, just the way we do stuff then it's far easier than trying to add that on at a later stage and kind of you know have that battling our muscle memory. Um, now, so aside from muscle memory, let's talk about what muscle memory actually is here, right? It, it, it's a crucial part of kind of playing fast. So if I'm playing something like, you know, The, the, the brain doesn't really have time to process the fact that I'm playing an E on the fifth string, then an open B, and then a B on the fourth string, then an open B, right? We we don't we, we can't process every note and every action that we're doing. And so the the muscle memory kicks in, which is this um, this basically it's a pattern of maybe a pattern of movement that we're we're we can let happen without us really thinking about it um, and so it, it is crucial muscle memory is crucial obviously it's it's part of um, every player and every piece we ever play and it, at some so some pieces you know say we're playing a freight a piece that's like um, very nice and slow but, I don't know some sort of suddenly a fast phrase we need to let the muscle memory take that phrase off so we can uh, we can articulate it we can't we can't think about every note we're playing there uh, where muscle memory fails is is often in the slow sections or often with a pause um i think tons of tons of memory slips happen between sections or uh, yeah after a pause after a minimum or after a, a whole note uh, it wasn't a piece, Potter head. I was just um, noodling. Oh, oh the, oh, the tremolo on this one. Um, that's Asturias. Um, everyone, everyone knows that piece, hopefully. Um, so muscle memory is very, very important for, for, for that side of things. The fast passages that we can't reasonably think of. Also, heavy, heavy dense chordal passages. Um, I can't I can't actually think of every note that I'm playing there as I'm playing them um, I, I'm using these patterns that I've learned and that are kind of infused in body and mind by muscle memory um, but the, so the, the the other side to, to memory I think there are you know, there are many but for me um, the yeah the intellectual side of music, um, which is important, it, like, and it informs the emotional. I, I quite like putting these together because I think people often wrongly assume that the um, the intellect and the emotional side of us are completely separate. Or you know, there's the artistic side and then there's the the analytical side. And I I think that's a gross mistake in believing that. I think the intellectual and emotional play such a such an intrinsic part together um you know, apollo, uh, apollo and dionysus i think they are one and one and the same <laughs> okay so like we can we can combine thinking intellectually about a piece with how we express it musically what are the ways that we can think intellectually about a piece well we've got the key right we've got the harmony, um, 
we've got intervals that we're playing. There's one stage that we can look at. So, so in a particularly, I, I personally wouldn't recommend doing this on every single um, note of every piece, analyzing the melodic and harmonic intervals. But for a section of music that we struggle to memorize, it's a fantastic way to, to add more information on so that our, our brain has more to go by to recall it. Um, again, but like think think of when you make a mistake with with with, with a piece, um, like that section there. Say, if all we got to go on is muscle memory, then when that is disrupted, when our playing is disrupted by a mistake for whatever reason, we've got nothing else to back it up. But if we know at this point the music that we've got a sixth there, an E to a C, that we also know that we're playing a C major chord. If we know that in our plucking hand we're using M and P, if we if we save that information in our brain, then we, then our brain has far far more things to latch onto to help us remember. Um, and so, if we can shove information on everything we can at the start of learning a piece, we bolster our muscle memory. So we can do that. You know, you could write down the names of the notes. Now, as soon as you write something down, you absolve your brain of the need to memorise it. So be careful too. Writing stuff down is great, but we have to look away so that we hold the brain responsible for memorising rather than just looking. Um, how did I see? E. Now looking at that, what interval is that? E to C. Anybody tell me what that interval is? E to C. Then we've got E to G, so we've got, uh, here we've got a minor third, and then a perfect fifth. I'm thinking of, a, of, of melodic intervals now. Um, C to F, perfect fourth, yada, yada, yada. Now you, you can kind of look away from the music and sing that. G, C, F, F. Oops, there we go. So that wasn't learnt. I hadn't, hadn't memorised that. E, G, C, F. Minor third, perfect fifth, perfect fourth. Isolate that line too. That's another way of playing that's really, really advantageous is separating out the melody from the bass. Um, all of these things are disruptors. Again, it's amazing. If you, if you play this piece really well together, um, you, you still might find it hard to play and isolate the, the bass line, even though we've played it a million times. Just the fact that we're not playing it with the melody means that we're disrupting that muscle memory. Um, Chris... Hanley says, hi Joseph, is that John Williams' piece? Uh, it, it's, um, John Williams has played it, um, but he didn't compose it. Uh, Simon holds your message is more detailed in terms of writing down all the finding than how I've learned before, or I've just written it down on the tricky bits. I'll try it from now on. Yeah, good. I, I, I think, see how you go with writing it down on every bit of a piece, uh, every bar, because there'll come a point when we just stop memor we stop kind of uh absorbing the information like you know for instance i'm not i'm not going to memorize the fact that we've got a perfect fifth a c major arpeggio then a, a, um you know a major second minor third um an r minor third and then a blah 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 all this stuff it, it's impossible to memorize it all but especially in harder sections or sections that our memory is failing it is uh, all it's information we can pin on the music and to be honest it does it, it can help from 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 you know the first practice session it can help just putting all this stuff down um and then when we're playing through we just occasionally remember it we remember the we remember the perfect fifth ah oh, major sixth
I'd say I need a holiday, but I've just had half term, which is essentially a holiday. Um, as any musician knows, there is no holiday. There's no such thing as holidays for musicians, especially in this period. <laughs> um, yeah, that was major six. Thanks for pointing that out. Anyone? No one put it out. Um, okay. Yeah. So so put it, putting um, things out at the intervals very important. Looking at what bits might be our uh, arpeggios. think if we've studied in a C major arpeggio before then we know that that's part of an arpeggio um, scalic lines okay singing the notes of these separate lines is also really lovely it's a really really great way to do that um, major sixth or G E C G C G, F, D, B, G, G, C, C, B, C, D. Okay, and the same thing here, major third, major second down, then minor third, minor second. Or you can um, recall the degrees of the scale, so one, three, two, four, three. Roger Cooper says, okay, so for example, there is a piece I've known from memory for many, many years. I don't really think about it and rely on muscling and just play. But every now and, then, now and again, I suddenly think about what's coming next and then blank. So would you just suggest really going back and analysing the music to help? Yeah, yeah, I would. I would. And, and I, I also think that, that the points where you blank might, there might also be just general disruption in the um then the muscle memory i have this this theory that you know you say you're playing a piece and you suddenly think about dinner or um the cat outside the window um that it's because your your actual thinking mind hasn't got anything to do like you're in a piece that we that we really know well intellectually and emotionally and and cerebrally, our mind is busy. And if we're just relying on muscle memory, our mind is kind of like, what, what am I gonna do? Well, you know, the, the conscious thinking part um, hasn't got anything to occupy itself. And so, especially under stress, we end up thinking of the stupidest things, like professionals in concerts, like the things we like we, th we think about is kind of ridiculous um, that isn't related to the music so going back and analyzing um, it harmonically melodically um, and and also just in terms of what is happening so when you have a memory blank revisit the section and just again play it looking very uh, going very slowly looking at the right hand, analysing what it's doing, vocalise it, M, I, A, I, M, I, M, okay, uh, do that a number of times, M, I, A, I, M, I, M, that can really help, M, I, A, M, R, I, M, I, M, um, same thing with the left hand, one, one, two, three, analyzing the chords here, C major.
better to me as, as being the being the fourth fifth chord. So you can analyze the harmony. C, F or D minor, G, C. Um, hmm. you, also, that that thing of blanking when you suddenly think about what's coming next. Like invite yourself to try and think more about what's coming as well. Like as you're playing a piece, you can you can try and one bar ahead of yourself thinking about what's coming uh, again and again and again to break that um yeah I, I do I, I just I think that is when when the when the rational brain can't visualize what's happening next when the, when the actual conscious part of the brain can't visualize it then the muscle memory just will will completely collapse um yeah, I need to. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit lost in my own thoughts there. So, um, oh yeah, okay. Also, playing stuff super slow. I know I bang on about this all the time, but like the act of playing something super slow disrupts muscle memory too. Um, that's why some people find it very difficult to play something they know well very slow because suddenly the muscle memory is um, disconnected. And we have to engage the rational brain in thinking about it. So that can really help. And by slow, I mean... At this speed, we can analyse a lot more about what's happening. We can think about intervals and note names. So go that slow. Um, and, and then go that slow, not looking at the music. Um, advanced warfare. So like, if you really want to uh, go nuclear on a piece, um, try, try writing the whole thing down from memory. Um, I've only ever done this a couple of times ever. But like it reveals instantly every single thing we don't know about peace. It's like it's such it's the 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 spotlight on all of our absolute deficiencies in playing. So if you could write down that phrase, for instance, uh, and get it completely right, but hats off because that's that's very very hard even with a simple piece like this remembering all the note lengths and everything but in doing that you've you you are really getting under the bonnet of the piece um uh, whilst i i rarely advocate that for the whole piece because it drives people no literally insane um i think you can do it on select phrases where memory lapses occur so like a, any specific place where you have lost your memory try it on that phrase alone and see how you go you can always try it and revert back to the music then try it again um and then another kind of advanced tactic <laughs> the warfare challenge yeah um uh I'll, I'll tell you about the tactic in a second I'm just going to go through the comments yeah uh so potter says that's me suddenly i've forgotten the piece entirely when i have to play it slow uh, it is it's because it is because you, you have focused more on um, muscle memory. Your muscle memory is taken over from um, from the other side, the intellectual and the uh, uh, the thoughtful side of it. And it, you know, in being musicians, we have to, we have to compartmentalize. We have to force so much into muscle memory because in a, in a piece of music, there are hundreds of thousands to millions of things happening in the brain if you just think of the things that we know about for every note there's right hand there's left hand there's timing there's articulation there's slant of the hand there's vibrato there's dynamic for every single note there's more things than we can even think about so so we can't we we have to use muscle memory um Yeah, 
and uh, do do that more. Play 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 things slow, Potted, and and play things slow. Looking at your hand, left hand and right hand too, um, and try not to zone out. Try and be present in whatever we're doing too. It's easy to just play slow and then be away, and be thinking about tomorrow's football match or whatever. But if we're able to. Be conscious, wholly conscious, wholly there, thinking index finger. Ah, oh, cool, I was kind of softening up my index finger there as I was playing that note. It's a G on the third string, very nice. It's the fifth of the key of C, okay. Um, all of these things can help. Um, Roger likes the warfare challenge, yeah. As you said, yeah, for short phrases, absolutely. Uh, uh, it's very much recommended. Um, like, it's it's also, it, it's shocking people, you know, young students going through the grade process might struggle to even get the first bar of a piece they know really well. Um, because this is also testing theory out. It's testing how well you can remember rhythms intellectually. We all We all know how to play Bum, 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 but we do know how to actually articulate that by writing it out. Many don't. Um, so that it can be just a wonderful, a wonderful thing to do, not just from memory, writing down the piece. Um, the other thing which is very, very useful and can kind of like make car journeys, or if you're a passenger or bus journeys, really, really useful is to have the score out and try and... Uh, try imagery, try playing the piece in your mind's eye. So uh, there was a period when I was young where I, I, I didn't play guitar for a good few months, just, you know, I had lost interest. But I realised that every time I, I listened to a song or was um, hearing the radio, I was visualising the fretboard in my mind and trying to capture the melody as it happened on onto a fretboard in your mind. And that can really, really help too. So uh, analysing the score... Um, I'm playing through it. Very, very useful uh, in your mind. Putting the guitar down. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> um, ouch. You can you can even do the motions, or you can not at all and just think of the motions. Think of your left hand. Think of your fretting hand now, playing the third fret, the C, holding a C chord down. You can you can go through the whole piece note by note, especially right uh, plucking hand. Imagine what your plucking hand is doing, um, and playing the whole piece in your head is very very useful. There's been a number of studies, uh, I don't think of musicians, but of, of athletes, um, where you visualise say a long jump, and you can actually get better at doing the physical action just by visualizing it so there's a big field about this at the moment it's um, proving to be quite interesting so playing through in your mind's eye is very important too um, Rachel says I, feel, I find my mind wanders easily when I know a piece well any tips to stay focused I think I, 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 I do I think ultimately like try try this method on, on, on the next piece you play try and have more to think about um yeah the, the, i think the mind wandering is also the, the it is a side effect of just of of just general performance anxiety and 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 um that's a whole other live stream how to tackle kind of playing with nerves um but staying focused Okay, like you know, very briefly, we've got we've got getting into the getting into a performance five breathing can really help slowing down the breathing, nasal breathing. We talked about that before. You know, five very slow nasal inhales and exhales. Um, yeah, it's 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 interesting. It it tends to be that, and when you know a piece really well, and then your mind just goes off on one. 
guess when that happens, you can also train yourself to bring it back to the piece by um, thinking about the the emotive side and the intellectual side of the piece you're playing. So when when you find your mind wandering, pause, look at the bar you're on, and do some analysis. Minor six. Um, minor. Major six. <laughs> right. I'm gonna. My my brain is 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 fried. So I'm gonna stop soon. Uh, octave. Yada yada yada. Um, minor tenth. All this can help us. Um, yeah, good. I, I'm, uh, there'll be there'll be a, a, a more thought out video on this at some point. Oh, <laughs> can you can see the PDF. There we go. Um, yeah, there'll be a, a, a more thorough video at some point, um, but in, in, a, in, a, in a distant future on this. Um, I'm going to pack it up because I yes, I, I feel like I'm not delivering great value to you guys <laughs> in my current state of mind. Um, shout your questions off quickly if you have anything. Um, let's recap. If any, if you can take away two things from today, uh, consider it your job to start memorizing from from the very first time you play a piece. So uh, you should definitely be looking away from the music as much as you are looking at the music, I think. Um, on a separate note, when we go back, when, we, when we've when we memorised a piece, we need to still return to the music every now and then. Um, that's how we eliminate mistakes that occur, just in general via playing for, for, for a long time a piece. Suddenly, one day we play the wrong string and that, that kind of settles into our memory of the piece. So we need to go back to the score every now and then. Um, yeah, so so consider it your your duty to start memorizing at the start of, of playing a piece. And the main process you can do this is by playing the piece by not looking at the notes. Look anywhere else but the notes. There's the fretting hand, there's the plucking hand, there's closing your eyes, um, looking at nothing. That can really, really help. Uh, and, and then the other main thing is try and push as much extra information onto the music as you can, whether that's expression, dynamics, and, and it's not just mezzo forte there and crescendo. This never does a piece justice. A phrase like this, we have to think of all the undulations of, of everything. How, how, for instance, the first two notes, we've got a soft note, a note of less stress going to a note of more stress. So feeling that and that having that as, as a bit of information to pin onto the start of the piece. It's not just ba ba. There's tension there that we can hang on with that interval. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, add, add as much information as you can onto the, onto the piece um, in as many different ways as possible. Singing the names um, of, of uh, singing the names of notes is very important. Separating lines out uh, and doing this uh, later on in your learning of a piece too. Trying to disrupt muscle memory by um, playing. One thing we didn't look at was actually start. Oh, here we go. Look. Um, so play everything slow enough that it disrupts music, but also start a loop right in the middle of a phrase. So try and deconstruct a piece to the point where you can't really, it doesn't make musical sense. Now in the piece, when we're playing this piece, we go every single time we play it like that, but because we don't play it starting on that note, we're not aware of it. Um, the whole way we've, we've, memorized, we've memorized it is from a different angle. So we, we've memorized it from the C. Um, if, if we start a phrase in the middle of the bar, it feels like an alien to us, and that's good. All these disruptors help shake up the muscle memory. Um, thanks, Roger. Uh, no, you've delivered great value. Thank you. Um, 
Parts ahead, no questions, but I'm certainly going to start closing my eyes to practice. Yeah, and in closing your eyes, you're opening your mind's eye, okay? So, like, it's, it's not like we're zoning out. You, you, can, you can even imagine your plucking hand in your head as you're doing it and, and then feel that connection. Uh, or just stare at an object. shake up the the way we, we're practicing um thanks for a great session session there were points that i'll be implementing in the practice in the near future good stuff thanks everybody um i will return to being a bit more on form another time <laughs> hopefully next week or at some point uh there are notes if you want to download them um put in the chat now and yes i might as well plug it as well if you um, found anything of value in this and you want to sign up to my mailing list with my mailing list um, I will be offering Zoom discount lessons to people uh, in my kind of time away from my school teaching um, so the next lot is in December um, so through the mailing list you'll get discounts for lessons and uh, a free Zoom masterclasses in December to launch my course material um, Simon Howard says I'm going to try this on Memories of Summer the Gary Ryan piece which I'm finding difficult to memorise great yeah let me know how it goes um, feedback would be appreciated and we will explore this another time as well thank you very much and uh, we'll see you again next time happy Halloween